And the star of the show today is a guest investor coming to us from Silicon Valley, where he is a software architect solution evangelist. <laughs> he has multiple properties around the U.S., a, a well-seeped and, and smart guy that we were just uh, starting to like crack open the top on. I can't wait to hear more. Mohan Pateri, welcome to the show, Mohan. Thank you. Give us a little sneak peek before we test your expertise over here on this property. Sounds good. So I'm a normal techie here in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. I had, I had purchased my primary home in 1998 and then 10 years into it, you know, there was a lot of appreciation. And so I was sitting on maybe like 500,000, 600,000 worth of equity. And then I came across this book called Stop Sitting on Your Assets, where they say, you know, equity in your home is useless if it just sits there. So then I wanted to find a way of uh, kind of say, find a way of investing that. And so that's when I also uh, you know, took this course by Robert Allen about nothing down. I wanted some kind of a real estate expertise and that course gave me a lot of background on it. Then what I realized is because I had equity in my home, they had this vehicle, the banks had this vehicle called a HELOC where you're allowed to borrow against your home's equity. And what I did was I borrowed 400,000 from my home's equity. And then, then based on my, the knowledge I gained from Robert Oil, and I did an analysis of what are the areas that would be good places to invest at that time in 2008, 2009 timeframe. I wanted to look at the places that had the, or had started falling big time. So it was the time when the, when the, the real estate crisis was starting of the, the big thing in the 2008, 2009 timeframe. And then I found a place close to my home called Tracy Mountain House, where they were a very, very high, high end community, which was like selling at 600,000. And after the prices were dropping drastically and literally a 50% drop. So the houses were now selling for 300,000. So I said, okay, maybe this is the place I want to uh, invest in. So I, I took my HELOC money and make that a down payment on six homes. I was like bidding like crazy on homes and whatever home, I didn't even, uh, sometimes I, the uh, first couple of homes I went and visited them, then the, the next four of them, I didn't even visit the homes. I was just looking at the photographs and then investing. I bought like six homes. The reason being six, uh, six was the magic number because the uh, Fannie, Freddie, Freddie had, had limits on maximum number of loans I could take out. So I could take out loans on a maximum of six homes. So I put like 30% down on all these homes and then uh, the remaining was uh, loans. So that's kind of how my journey began. And initially it was scary. The average was 300K when I bought it, but the prices dropped to even 200, 220. So you, I had like a big churn in my stomach when I saw that, right? But, you know, I had to just uh, hang through it. The risk was not only mine, it was also the banks. So that was good good to have loans around it. The rents were good. The rents were decent. So I found an agent there who was managing all my properties. They were, they were, so it was not like turnkey, like JWB is, but at least they were managing all my properties and collecting rent and stuff like that. And so I, you, I did that. Then after uh, seven or eight years, I realized that the prices have started going up and I want to do something called dollar cost averaging. I want to start selling before some other crisis hits. So out of the six homes, I was selling one or two homes every year, starting 2015, 2016. And at that time I wanted to see, okay, where do I take this money and where do I invest? I don't want to pay taxes on it, right? So I don't want to pay taxes on the gain. I want to defer the tax, uh, defer the taxation, right? So that's when uh, I looked at the 1031 as a means of uh, kind of moving forward. And also one good thing I did, all the money I got from my rents, I never used it for my personal expenses. I, I reinvested in the sense that I used it to pay down my loans. So I started paying down loans of uh, one home at a time. And then, so the home that is completely paid off, I would sell. So, so that when I want to buy in the future, I don't want to take a loan because there's limitations on number of loans you can get and stuff like that. So what I did was then the home that is completely paid off, I would sell that year. So I sold and then I was looking around and that's when I came across JWB where I needed inventory, I needed good cash flow. I want to move from appreciation. See, there's two concepts in real estate. There's appreciation, there's cash flow. Uh, if there's one is high, sometimes the other one is low. I wanted to move from appreciation category to the cash flow category. And that's when 
JWB had a very uh, beautiful turnkey formula. And so I started investing in them. Every time I sell a home in California, I either buy three or four homes in JWB. And I, I didn't have any problems with inventory. And they had very good investments. And that's kind of my story. And so now I have 10 homes with JWB. And also I want to diversify a little bit. So I have another 10 homes with uh, REI Nation in Memphis. So that's kind of how and I also look for states that don't have taxes for real estate investors. So that's my story. Goodness. There are so many great nuggets right there. Mon. All right, so let's make our move here. So we've taken a look uh, at the overall portfolio. Now let's look at the major key performance indicators. All right, this is how you look at your portfolio in two seconds and know how you're performing over the lifetime of your investment. And so for Moan, he's performing at 5.99% lifetime return on investment. All right, he's been investing for 4.6 years. But something that's really interesting here is you start to look at these net rental income numbers and these lifetime total return numbers. Just disclaimer for everybody who may not be familiar with these numbers, these numbers do not include home price appreciation. These include net rental income, excuse me, the lifetime total return includes net rental income, tax savings, and any principal pay down. Now, Moan doesn't have principal pay down because he's buying them all cash. So look at this, right? His net rental income is almost $190,000, excuse me, $189,000 of net rental income in four and a half, four and 4.6 years. Is that pretty great? Should we all just give Moan a big round of applause? 189,000 is what he's used. And they go, go back to thinking about what he did, right? He started with equity in his home. He accessed that equity in his home to go and buy properties, call it 10 plus years ago, 15 years ago. And because of that, he's created an income stream, which has earned him $189,000 in actual income in his bank account. Is that pretty cool? The other thing I wanted to point out here is his lifetime total return, 221,000. So the difference between net rental income and his total return again, is his additional tax savings. So you heard Mohan reference that earlier in the call as well. Being able to depreciate the properties helps you save on taxes and that continues to add to the return on investment. But, you know, Pablo, I want to ask you this, right? Normally when we see a, a return of 6%, you know, that's a little bit lower than what we see elsewhere, right? For other clients that we've, we've brought on here. Why do you think that is, Pablo? I would assume because since he's doing cash, then it's not also including the, the debt pay down that comes with that, right? Yeah. Well, when you buy in cash, you put more of your own money down. Mm -hmm. And so what you get from that is more cash flow, but your expected return is lower. As I always do, Moan, as I just showed the highest lifetime return on investment and the lowest uh, return on investment for your portfolio here, not too much to mention here other than your highest return the spread is always going to be a little bit less right? when you're investing in cash. When you're investing with uh, conventional financing, your spreads will be generally larger, right? That's how financing works, right? The highs are higher, the lows can be lower. For you, your highest lifetime return is 6.89% annualized with an expected return of 5.19. So we're doing about a point and a half, almost two points better there. And your lowest lifetime return is about 3.23%, whereas we were expecting about 5.7, right? So and you've got eight other properties that are right in the mix there. So really a less volatility, less variability here for this asset class than what you generally find in other asset classes out there. All right. And then last but not least, we wanted to look big picture at all five of your profit centers. While the client ROI report is incredible, it helps you see what we are basically controlling, right? The rents, right? the maintenance costs, the property management fees, how are we doing as a provider for you? Um, it is also somewhat limited, right? It's not seeing all of the profit centers. It's not taking into account uh, home price appreciation and inflation hedging. And so I wanted to do a, a complete overview of, of really what you've earned. If we take that home price appreciation and inflation hedging into account here, for your five profit centers, net rental income, we talked about almost $189,000 over the last almost five years, an incredible accomplishment. Your tax savings, about 32 grand of tax savings. A lot of investors out there don't even pay attention to the tax savings. You know, right. if you're you or me or Mohan, right? I'm probably paying attention to 32 grand of that, so that I've saved compared to other asset classes out there. Now, principal pay down is zero, right? We talked about that. That's the value of your resident paying your loan down. And for Mohan, it's better for him to buy in cash. And so he's not getting that additional profit center of 10, uh, principal pay down. And that's okay. But next, let's go look at home price appreciation. You know, your properties here in the last four and a half, five years 
have appreciated to the tune of over, over $440,000. How cool is that, Moan? How does it make you feel? That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. And I think it's worth pointing out that when we look at these profit centers, many investors don't pay attention to anything other than cash flow. They don't pay attention to tax savings, principal pay down, home price appreciation or inflation hedging. But if you look at the overall pie for where his returns on investment are coming from, the majority is coming from home price appreciation. And some may say, well, Greg, that's just because the market went up for the last year or two years. But what will actually happen is if you hold this thing constant for the next 10 years, 15, 20 years over a full market cycle, this actually plays itself out very similarly. So we have to open up our eyes to look beyond just cash flow. We have to look at all five profit centers when we make those decisions, especially as you're deciding between markets, because some markets are better positioned to be, to be growing at a faster rate than other markets, and that will have a dynamic impact. For inflation hedging, hard to categorize this one. What this means is as the cost of goods and services go up around you, your rents tend to go up and your home prices tend to go up. So you're seeing some of that. And Moan's been the, been the beneficiary of that. Just important to note that the consumer price index is what the government used to measure inflation. It's at seven and a half percent. That's the highest it's been in 40 years, right? Inflation is like a thief. Inflation steals your wealth over time. And so if you are investing in assets that are not tied, that are not hard assets, while you may be making money, you may actually be losing money when you factor in inflation, right? One of the benefits of investing in real estate is that rents go up. Home prices tend to go up in inflationary times. There is absolutely a correlation to that. And Mohan's the beneficiary of that. So congratulations on that. I've been totally privileged that uh, I came across JWB. It has been a true blessing and I'm really grateful to you guys. And so when my kids say, oh, you know what, I'm going to buy this home and keep it here. And uh, you know what, I'm not going to sell it. I'm Oh, no, it's an investment. I say, no, let's do an analysis. Let's analyze. And, you know, uh, turnkey is amazing. And you guys made the word turnkey really, really effective. And that's kind of the beauty, right? And uh, it's a blessing, true blessing for real estate investors, particularly when you're doing 1031 exchanges and things like that so that you can defer your taxes. Uh, it's like, I'm truly, truly, truly happy to come across you guys and I hope to continue investing with you guys. Thank you guys. I feel the same way, Mon. Uh, yeah. It's really a pleasure to look at another successful investor who started to invest at roughly the same time I did, who believes the same thing I believe and to look 15 years down the road and see it being such a successful venture for you, 